Welcome, everybody, to the Thursday edition of the Not Your Average Invest Show. We got a special show today. We don't have too many people in our community with a beloved nickname that everybody wants to meet all the time. <laughs> today, we're highlighting one of them. I am your host, Pablo Gonzalez. Greg is in his last day not being here because of business planning, so we're not here. But of course, we have our amazing community manager. We call her MTM because she brings us the moments that matter and because her name is Madison the Magnificent. Say hello, Madison. Hi, everybody. And today, the guest of honor, like I said, he comes from the mountains of Colorado where on a on an average Tuesday, average Thursday, he will tell you the forecast of what is happening directly outside of his window. I have been there. I have made friends with hummingbirds in his backyard. It's a beautiful aesthetic presence. He is. He comes from the media industry, so I have very, very high expectations of this conversation and this voice. He is the mountain man. Hello. Welcome Hello. to the show. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Bill. How you doing, man? Hey, very well. It's good to see you again, Pablo. Like Pablo just said, he came out here. He enjoyed our deck out, out on our Colorado mountain vista in view of Devil's Head. And I wanted to, if I can do this without messing it up, I want to just kind of tilt the camera. And this is kind of the view I've got every day when I get my little chat mountain report. I can't tilt up, but yeah, we've got a we've got some aspen trees going and usually some wildlife, some deer. And that drive, that drive in your place is pretty spectacular too. Tons of wildlife. It's uh, aesthetically beautiful. That look there did not do it justice, just for the record. It is it is even more majestic than what it looks out there. Love visiting you out there, Bill. Bill, as you know, when we welcome folks in here, welcome everybody. If you are tuning in on YouTube, if you're tuning in from the podcast, you know, one of the things that we do here is we do this show live, right? Like we, if you go to nyais.com, you get to be part of this community. You get to check in with people. You get nicknames if you are valuable enough and, and chime in enough times and you make it easy, right? That's one of the things that Bill did is that he made it easy with his mountain reports and you get to be part of a little tradition that we do to kick this thing off. Bill, you know what we're talking about here? Roll call, baby. Roll call, let's go. All right. We got the leadoff hitter, John Henning, as usual, kicking us off. We got, ooh, the better Greg is in the house, even though we don't have Greg Cohen. We got Greg Stone from, from sunny New Jersey. Good to have you. We got the early bird, Dean Curry, checking in with a good afternoon from Columbus, Ohio. We got Lita Song checking in from Minnesota. Lita. You got a you got a nickname coming. You've been here. You've been here plenty with a good uh, sign on that I like. We got Matthew Edwards from Virginia Beach, a place that I've heard is lovely. Good to have you. We got somebody checked in from their from their text, and if you do, you you're here as not your average guest, and that is that person checking in from Northern Virginia. If you let me know who you are, I can call you out by name. But Northern Virginia as well. We got our regulars, Gary and Rosalind Riley, the second family of the Not Your Average Invest Show from Marietta, California. We regard you, Riley. It's good to have you. We got Leo Paraganan. Pa, pa, da, da, da. Paraganan. Pa, pa, da, pa. <laughs> Leo, good to have you back, man. I feel like I haven't said your name in a minute. We got Big Papa in the house. Love it when he calls in. Big Papa throwing his hands in the air like a true player. Greg's dad. We got the ringmaster of the Natural Average Invest Show community, Drew Barnhill. We got the patriarch and matriarch of the first family, Ken and Carolyn Maline. We salute you. And Denny Davis with a woo, Pete Suey. <laughs> Check it in, Denny. Good to have you back. We got Pedro Nazanzano from Jersey checking in with a text as well. And love to have you all in the house. Love the roll call. But my favorite, favorite, favorite moment of the week, Bill, you know what that is? The favorite moment of the week? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll give you a hint. It's when Madison shares good news. What's the oh, good news? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm not going to forget. That's okay. All right, everybody. So some super cool news that we actually got in our Tuesday morning meeting. They broke it to the company. So I'm going to break it to you guys. JWB has been shortlisted for Information Management Network's second annual single family rental industry awards. Not only did we get nominated, but two of our companies got nominated. So the JW Real Estate Capital company got nominated for National Operator of the Year. And JWB Cares, which I hold near and dear to my heart, got nominated for Charitable Initiative of the Year. So super cool opportunity for the company. It's it's really cool to just get recognized, especially on a national level for, for what we're doing. So decisions get made on December 3rd. So 
Knock on wood, fingers crossed, I have even more good news coming coming then. Let's go. We're all going to have to tune in on, December, on the December 3rd show to, or mm-hmm. whatever the Thursday thereafter. That's awesome, Madison. So this is a national award. Who gives the award? Information Network Management, the I, IMN okay. Network. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. That's awesome. I feel like we're just announcing, JWB gets like, how many awards a year do you think that they got? Uh, too many to <laughs> count. <laughs> many to count. <laughs> yeah, we have a bunch of them listed on our on our website, but we so many that it, it's just, it's not going to fit. It's pretty so cool. We need a whole page. Yeah, I love it. Greg has told me a couple of times, right? Like as I'm growing my business, the value of like applying to and winning these awards, yeah. he sees it very much as like not so much in business development as much as like it attracts tracks great teammates. Yeah. Is Another a big one is like best places to work. Yeah. And we got an email from Laura, our HR guru, um, that to keep a lookout on um, our emails that that survey is coming out. And normally you have to hound teammates and employees to take those surveys. But I look forward to it because it's just another another opportunity to brag on on this awesome. It's cool. Company. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great great reason to brag, great like thing to thing to celebrate. I love this is the first time that I hear JWB cares. Yeah. get nominated for an award, right? So like I didn't realize that JWB cares. That's its own entity too, yep. right? Like they have a charitable organization. Mm-hmm. That's what we do the golf tournament for. We donate homes to Yep. um to uh, Canines for Warriors yep. and stuff like that. So good stuff. You, you know what I call it, Madison? I call that good news. Thank you for sharing. Of course. All right. Now to the main event, the uh, mountain man, uh, Bill. We were just talking, man. I I, I want to go over your story as an investor and, and everything you got going on. We're going to talk about how you pulled off this 1031 exchange and, and dive into that. But you were just kind of updating me on, on your new business that you're doing, which I find really fascinating. Can you tell me a little bit about that, man? Uh, yeah, certainly. It's called MomsEquity.com. And I originally started into real estate at, in about 2017 with a company called ROI Properties. But I've branched off to a new niche, the small equity, MomsEquity.com. And it helps adult children of seniors who are in the, the process of making the transition to senior living communities or senior living care. Now, in order to do that, they typically need to sell mom's house or dad's house to uh, pay for that. A lot of folks just don't have the savings to do it. And these communities cost anywhere from $20,000 to $70,000 per year. Those are $70,000, obviously, is a really nice country club style place. But again, to, to pay for it, you've got you to hustle and get the adult kids together if you have kids and sell the house to pay for it. Makes sense, man. And you know what? When you first started telling me about it, number one is, I, I, you know, I don't know if I don't know how much you and I have talked about this idea of category design, but like I, I, I'm a big fan of that discipline of like finding finding the market, like creating your own market where it didn't exist before. And one of the big ways that you do that is you find a con- a big context shift. And and what I'm what I'm hearing from you that I find fascinating. So you find this context shift. You look for the missing and then you innovate into it, right? Like, and that's a, that's a really, really great way to build what you call a category king. And what I, what I'm hearing in this business is that there is, you know, the baby boomers are, are, are kind of in that, in that part where they're having to get into homes. It's one of the biggest generations in America. Millennials who are their children are having this big, big problem where, where they need to figure out how to pay for that stuff. And you as an innovator, right? Like the missing is how to, how to do that. And you as an innovator, you're using real estate and your real estate background and everything that you've learned as an investor in order to fill that need, right? In order to provide that opportunity, you find the, the cash that is necessary to take care of mom by selling a home and you are innovating around that, man. And I just, anytime somebody tells me about a business where they're solving such a key problem, I'm always, I'm always fascinated by it, man. I think it's really cool. Yeah, thank you for that. It's I call it the silver tsunami because, like you just said, it's the baby boomers, and it's going to get worse and worse, yeah. uh, for lack of a, of a better description. Worse in terms of, I mean, the communities right now are filling up. There's waiting lists, so it's uh, it's a real urgency to to be prepared and to think ahead to that. And to be more specific, I'm not a realtor. I don't have my license. I do go in. I buy the properties myself, and as an exit strategy, I'll typically wholesale it out to another trusted investor because the worst thing I could do is, you know, we, when you get into wholesaling, I can cover a little bit about that later. If anybody wants to learn how to wholesale, I can help them out. 
one-on-one because, you know, that's the way the community works. But as a wholesaler, I want to make sure that that we get to closing and that the the transition the, is executed, whether I keep it and renovate it because I do a lot of that. Or again, if we just sell it to another investor, we'll sign that contract. But we want to make sure that mom and dad are taken care of. Makes sense, man. And I would imagine that when this stuff is happening, it's time sensitive, right? So they need to work with a professional like you in order to get that money in the door to get mom into that home as soon as the waiting list opens up. So it makes a ton of sense that you're there to facilitate that lead, that deal, make sure that they get paid. And then you worry about the asset on the back end. I think it's a really innovative way to do it, man. Really cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it could get really messy, you know, but a lot of, I, I'm an only child, but most people have siblings and the adult children have, have siblings who are out of state they can't, they have jobs, they have families, they can't come in to deal with all this. So I have strategies that also help them with de- deciding who's going to be the lead child, who's the most mature child, the most experienced child, who wants to take it on. And then I give that leader tips on how to deal with the siblings, how to deal with the lifetime collection of mom's stuff. I mean, how many of our parents have collected, <laughs> you know, I laugh because my I went through this with my own elderly parents. That's how I got in the business. But the 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 addiction they had to QVC, I didn't know about. <laughs> and so you just got to get rid of all that. You got to liquidate it. And so there's so many nuances to this kind of transition in real estate. Yeah, all, all the tchotchkes. All right, Bill. So that's 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 what you're doing now. Let's rewind a little bit to when you kind of what brought you to real estate? Kind of what what opened up your eyes of of getting into real estate? Yeah, that's a good question. I just mentioned my parents. My I was I was an only child and in, in about 2005 I was working in Nashville as a TV producer doing commercials and my parents were my parents are quite a bit older. They were quite a bit older than I am. They're 40 years older. And that's kind of a large age gap age gap for most adult children dynamic. And they were getting up there and they were starting to have health problems. So I had to leave Nashville to come back to Denver and make sure they were taken care of and got them into hospitals and to deal with these rapidly accelerating health problems. I eventually did get them into assisted living. And I I kid you not, I was looking, I was scrambling for letters that we got in the mail or they got in the mail frequently about, I'll buy your house for cash. Like, who are these guys? Who are these cash buyer guys? Because I need to sell dad's house right away. One of them's going to have to, you know, we're going to need the money real fast. I don't know what's in their bank accounts. I don't have access to it, but I got to sell the house. Dad even said, son, sell the house. So long story short, I ended up not having to do that right away. Unfortunately, I got them into assisted living, which was great. It was a great year or two. They really enjoyed it. But they then they just went downhill. One passed right after the other. Mom passed and dad Dad passed a couple of months later, and that that actually happens frequently with a lot of seniors. They one after another, mm-hmm. but there we were back to square one. Though we still had to sell the house. My wife and I didn't want to live there. We ended up living there for quite a while and just kind of putting off the inevitable of selling it. And my wife Marie found this cool little two-hour class saying, "Hey, you know, let's just go to this fortune builders class. It'll they'll teach us how to." prep a house for sale and how to renovate it. I'm like, wow, two hours. Great. We'll learn all this in two hours. Awesome. So we went to the two hour class and that was just the warm up. That's the fortune builders warm up for, oh, but hey, you want to learn more of this? Come to our three day seminar. It's only 250 bucks. So Marie and I said, hey, yeah, the sound, we like what we hear in the two hours. We went to the three day seminar and by day two of the fortune builder seminar, we we're like, Oh my gosh, we need the curriculum. We got to buy, we got to buy into this. And so we bought into the mastery class, which was back then it was $50,000. We found fortune builders coached us on how to find the money to get it. Mm-hmm. And that's, isn't that in real estate? Isn't that what we all need to learn? How to find money, how to get credit, how to use, what's 100%. the word Pablo? Leverage. Leverage. Yeah. Yep. And we learned all that. We went through the $50,000 mastery. We got trained by Thad Merrill, Paul Shively, our our, our buddy, our boy. WB, yeah. JD Sajian, and, and all those guys, and really took to it. I, we just really attacked it. That's awesome, man. What year was that? So that was 2017, January. 2017. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so so then talk to me. 2017, you, you go all in, right? Like you 
come up with 50 bucks and you become a, a fortune builder's mastery, like so many of our people in our community that have come in that way. You learn about real estate. I assume you had a couple of different models of what you're doing. Fast forward me to, I remember you started showing up to the show. I would say like maybe November, December of 2022, when we started getting the whispers of the mountain man in our community. What brought, what brought you to the, to the community of the, of the natural average investor show? Yeah. What good memory you have. That's about right. I had bought a condo in the year 2000. I hadn't lived in it very long because I, like I said, I moved to Nashville, tried to sell the condo, couldn't, couldn't dump it for anything. I thank God because I, I got to keep that asset class rented out. And so right around the time when I finally got off my butt and decided, well, I, I need to sell this condo, I kind of learned a little bit about the 1031 exchanges, and this was about August. And so I was starting to, to talk to another company that was similar to JWB. JWB wasn't on my radar at all. Just talking to somebody else and prepping my condo, getting it renovated. And then Paul Shively caught my attention on Facebook. Uh, and I knew he was a, a member of the Passive Income Club. And I think he started talking about 1031 exchanges. Something triggered me. And I, I got into the Not Your Average Investor Show, started tuning into that. And then, you know, hearing about GC and Pablo and, you know, and, and, and all the, the great things, and all these, the, the great selection of properties, you know, it was easy to uh, get enrolled in that mentally. It happened really quickly. And the timing was perfect. And then I kind of already knew about 1031 exchanges through fortune builders. And, okay. and that if for, for folks who don't know that. Yeah, please to, ex explain the 1031 exchange to somebody that's like just checking in and why, why it was attractive to you at that moment in your life. Yeah. Thank you. I'd first heard about it through fortune builders. It's uh, it refers to the section of the IRS uh, and the, the government where you, it defers capital gains on any property that you excuse me, investment property that you may sell to whereby instead of rather, instead of selling it and then having to pay the presumable capital gains on it that you very likely might have to pay depending on how much income you're making any given year, that that tax taxable amount could be 10% all the way up to 40%, depending on, again, on your income in that given year. So I, I started digging into that and learned that you, you need to find a, an intermediary, 1031 intermediary. It's a third-party company that will, will take, when you sell your original investment, they'll take that money, put it into escrow until you find a new like-kind investment of equal value or greater. And it can be up to actually three properties like-kind. So in this spe specific example, forgive me for rambling, I'll try to get to the point here. No, that's great. <laughs> the con my condo was worth about three hundred thousand dollars. I sold it for three hundred seventeen. Got lucky, so I had to take that three seventeen and either buy a like kind property for at least three hundred seventeen, or go on up. So, this being a part of the JWB community, I was already becoming educated that hey, I've I got a I have access to a JWB menu here. <laughs> you know, they serve the menu. GC, hey, Bill, look at all this. Look look at these fine properties you have a selection of. And anywhere from $180,000 on up to $400,000 below median properties in a great community, uh, a lot of potential for growth. So I bought two of those off the menu that equaled $405,000. So I went from three hundred seventeen dollars to four hundred five, dollars financed what my cash couldn't carry, and boom. There you go, man. I like it. I like it. And, you know, for Margaret, so Margaret Smith's here in the chat. She's saying that she's got a 1031 house in Tallahassee that she's very interested on in moving. What Bill is talking about, I, I, I think what goes on unmentioned in this, in this menu idea is that when you are doing a 1031 exchange, there is a timeline and you have to have a property identified. And there's like all these different rules for this wonderful tax deferment to happen. So it makes a lot of sense to work with people that have existing inventory, ready to go, that is an expert in the process that can guide you through it. And the team here at JWB kind of checks all those boxes, right? Like they have they have the inventory, they've done this a thousand times, they put you with a, 
a, a closing agent and a portfolio manager and everybody that's going to help you do that paperwork. Was that, was that your, you know, was that your experience? Can you talk to me about the experience of like actually going through the process, what you learned in doing it, what things you did yourself, what things JWB helped you out with stuff like that? Um, yeah, thank you. I Luckily, I found a, a 1031 manager here in Denver, Colorado, but JWB was quick to say, hey, we've, we have resources and our guys will cost anywhere from 500000 or I'm sorry, will cost anywhere from $500 to about $1,200. But I hired my own guy. I think I paid 900 for it, but I was comfortable with him, had a good reputation. But then, you know, I had to, again, I had to finance. So I went to JWB. Well, who do you know who can finance? Get me into that. And they, mm -hmm. they've had someone they worked with for years and he, that team went to work. I, I didn't, I didn't exactly, because I'm self-employed. Mm -hmm. One of the downfalls of that is that unless you're taking a, 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 a what am I trying to say? A salary and yeah. you show steady years of salary, it, it can be a little complicated because I didn't, I couldn't show an income. I had a company that made a lot of money, but anyway, I won't get into the weeds on that, but this, they worked it out. The JWB resource really took, took charge and Took a lot, little bit longer to to do, but it, it all worked out well in the end. But time time is something that you need to pay attention to because you have forty five days to identify what properties you want to buy. You don't have to necessarily go under contract with them, but as soon as you sell your original investment asset class or property, you have one hundred eighty days to close on your new property of like kind or properties. Like Dean just said, he, I think he did the same thing. He had two properties. I think he bought four, if I'm not mischaracterizing him, but he had a short time to do that. You've got, mm -hmm. I think it's the same every, in every, whatever state. I don't think it really changes. Where was your original property? Was it in Colorado? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what I was going to point out is that's, that's the other thing that makes the Jacksonville market so attractive being below the median, below the median house price in the US is that you hear this a lot. You hear I 1031 one property into two, I 1031 two into four, because your money goes a long way down here from what you are exiting. I know Ken Moline bought a bunch from his, his Palo Alto home over there in Silicon Valley when he wow. got a reverse mortgage and put that money to work as well. So that's, that's one of the reasons people come to Jacksonville because it is the it is still cheaper than most other fully developed markets. And it still has this like high growth scenario where, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at better than average home price appreciation, even though you are lower than average price. Is that what, what brought you to, what brought you to Jacksonville specifically? Were you, you said that you had 1031 on your radar I guess, did you, did you find the night your average invest show and then start looking Jacksonville or were you looking for Jacksonville? And that's why you found the, the not your average invest show. Mm -hmm. No, it, uh, it was not your average investor show that brought me okay. to Jacksonville. However, fortune builders has what's called the passive income club. And that, again, that's where Dean Shively, as you well know, is uh, kind of the leader in that. And every year at Las Vegas, we'd go to a, a real estate convention called ignite. So I think you've been there. GC has been there. Yep. And so Paul would teach us in a one hour seminar or two hour seminar, hey, you know, here's how you identify passive income, rental property, buy and hold. And here's the kind of the, the, the states that you can sort of look at. It was very broad in general, but it was specifically JWB brought me to Jacksonville because what they teach in passive income class led me to places like Austin and Ohio. I was actually about to pull the trigger with the company in Ohio. So thank God I didn't, but yeah. It, Agreed. It, yeah, exactly. It, but they, the great thing about passive income class is not your average investor show. They teach you how to identify these asset classes. And that was a huge, huge education, but my gosh, how long it took me years before I pulled the trigger because I didn't want to sit down and start digging into any given city to see what their demographics were. Who's moving into the, the state, the city, the, the area, what corporations are coming in, what kind of jobs, where, where are the working class areas? I didn't have time to deal with any of that. It's all built in with JWB. You yeah. don't have to think about it. And if you want to, and then once you're involved, it doesn't end there as we all know. You, I've got two, like Aaron has two, I've got two properties. 
Um, so a lot, a lot of you guys have a lot more. I'm getting up there in age. My my goals are a little bit more aggressive, but you know, I, I have to hurry on some things. But hey, I can do this 1031 exchange within these JWB properties. Let's say that GC finds some cool properties down by a stadium that cost a million dollars. Hey, I might jump on that. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll sell my mountain house and go live there when I'm done. You know, you have a no number of different exit plans to work with awesome. JWB. So Bill, you mentioned something in there, this idea of demographics and stuff like that. Can you explain to me why the demographics and knowing that stuff is important to you now that you like look back at the decision of considering Austin or Ohio or, or, or Jacksonville? Uh, yes. It's if you, if you weren't care, careful, but I hate to bring up San Francisco and I don't want to get in, into politics too much because I do invest in San Francisco, but it's very tenuous right now. And, and what looked good out in San Francisco three years ago, short years ago, don't, doesn't look so good right now. And again, I've, that's where my money's working right now. And thank God it's been successful, but it's getting a little bit iffy out there. So you've got to be really careful and it's got to be timely. Um, you know, things could change anywhere, even in Jacksonville, but that's a beautiful part about the show in tracking your investment because you get to hear Pablo and GC talk about the economic climate and the demographics there and the working class demographics. Are they growing? Heck yeah, they are. Is there a potential for 23% growth because of all the business that's going on and development out there? Yep. Very important to track those demographics. Yeah. Yeah. And we talk about it a lot on the show, this idea that if, is a city growing or is it not growing? And if it is growing, it is, it is two things. It's one risk mitigation because there's, there's going to be a ongoing supply of uh, residents that you will have in a pool of people that are coming to town and want to, and want to be here um, because there's economic opportunity. And two, growth of a city equals home price appreciation, right? So like Jacksonville has been one of these cities that has been one of the fastest growing cities in America for the last 10 years. During COVID, it just absolutely crushed. There is all that's happening right now in the economic flywheel of the city where it's still going, even though other places are slowing down because downtown is coming online and all these other great things are coming. Fortune 500 companies are moving here. So it makes sense that for you looking around, right? Like you've got your, you got, you want your money working working harder for you than you're looking at those demographics, right? Like we talk about, you look at, I think it's, I think the scorecard that we did for cities was like, you want in an average popula in a population size of more than a million so that you have that kind of like resiliency and, and, and risk mitigation. You want to have a growing population. You want to have a, an above average renters uh, demand, you know, like rental demand. You want below average home pricing and, you know, Jacksonville just fits all those things for, for maximizing appreciation. And I, I just want to say that anybody that's listened to right now, you know, like I know that, I know that Margaret is here and Teresa's here and you're both kind of like thinking about these, these things. Normally we have Greg here on Thursday that can answer really, really specific things. And, and what I, and, and he'll be back next week. What I want to encourage you is get that conversation started with the JWB team. Cause especially when it comes to these 1031 things, you want to, you want to be prepared, right? Like you, you want to talk to an expert that can talk you through like what to expect, how to be prepared, what you need to look for. Even if you're a year out, just having these conversations where they can help you identify um, where, where you can pull more resources from kind of like Bill did when he first bought his like fortune builder stuff and also what it can all do and, and, and get you going, I think is a, is a really good call. And you can do that by going to chat with jwb.com, just popping into the calendar there, Bill, what is, what, what are like, I, you know what, Ken, Ken's got this question that says, Bill, how do you compare the education you got from fortune builders to what you get twice weekly from the not your average investor show. But before we go there, I would love to kind of compare the expert that you pay to help you with the 1031 versus the stuff that you've already learned and, and kind of like figured out through this community. Can you guide me through the buying decision of when is it time to actually pay for a consultant? And when, when, when would you get understand that it's like, you can kind of rely on the team at JWB and the people that you're working with to give you a little bit of guidance. Can you, can you talk me through that? How you think about it? Well, in, in terms of when you say consultant, do you mean 1031 when, consultant? 
Yeah, you said you you said you hired a 1031 kind of like facilitator or something like that. Oh, okay. I should call him an intermediary. Intermediary. Uh, yeah, that's somebody. probably what you call it. That's on me, buddy. Yeah, thank you. And he's just the escrow guy. In fact, okay. I, I hardly used him for anything because of the education of uh, fortune builders. So, yeah, he's just a guy who warned me not that I couldn't touch my money. Got it. <laughs> so. Got it. So, so then, so then I guess, I guess talk to me about what were your, what were your fears going into the process? What kind of support did you, did you, did you feel like you might need there? Did you feel like you had that pretty covered because of fortune builders and stuff like that? Um, yeah, thank you. I, I think one of the, one of the concerns I had was meeting the timeline. And again, it goes back to JWB. It happened to be in January where you guys came up with the incentive program, which I think was the first time you'd ever done that. But there's a deadline to uh, January, I think January 31st, to where I could take advantage of the incentives. Mm -hmm. And that was for, you could do it for one or more properties. So that was huge. And isn't it funny how some of us don't get anything done when we don't set a deadline? Well, boom, (laughs) GC had a deadline. It's January 31st. So that got little Billy Mountain Man Green (laughs) off his butt to go and and get this stuff wrapped up and done. So yeah. All right. Let's answer Ken's question. How do you compare? I've always wondered about this, Ken. It's actually a really good question. How do you compare the stuff that Fortune Builders puts together versus kind of like what it's like at the, at the pace of learning alongside the community and listening to the podcast and stuff like that? How do you, what are the differences? What's what's one good for and the other stuff like that? What do you, what's your take on it? I would give that through a piece of advice. Take advantage of the community because you can, you can join Fortune Builders and pay anywhere from $20,000 to $50,000, and it will be comprehensive. You'll go through in-person boot camps, as well as an online curriculum, both very, very powerful. And then the once a year Ignite. So I'm not sure if they're doing the Ignite in Las Vegas every year now, but we get a lot of value out of it. However, with, through JWB, access your community. Call guys like me if you want to learn how to wholesale a house. Call me. I, I'd be happy to help. I think any one of these Fortune Builder students Dean, Aaron, MVP, I mean, I'm yeah. for all these guys, but yeah. hey, I'm sure they would help you out because that's just who they are. You know, they can't get into the nitty gritty details like fortune builders, but along the way, uh, you're also going to learn a lot from Pablo and, and GC as we all do. And the guests when they have Paul Shively on, um, you know, we're going to learn a lot, you know, here and there and little bits and pieces. So you can, it's kind of long route to go, but access your network. I, I love that that's where you want to build because that to me is that to me is the value that I felt we could uniquely put together that was extraordinary, right? Like I think just like anything else, right? I was talking about category design. I've read every book. I've watched every YouTube video and every podcast. Oh, yeah. I just enrolled into like a $12,000 kind of like year long MBA in it, right? And wow. that has that has its own structure that has this thing that I really want. But the most valuable part of, of, I think, what we created, right? So like if we're going to juxtapose free content and the stuff that we do, we also have a class as well. And, 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 and what really has value that Fortune Builders also does very well is the network, is the, I'm here on this, I'm here on this Zoom call. I know that, you know, we're talking about 1031 Exchange. Dean in the chat already said that he's done one. You're talking about doing one. There's other people here. And the members of this community that are always just like, yeah, man, here's my number. Uh, you know, give me a call or look me up on Facebook and, and hit me up. Happy to get on the phone with you. I know I know Lee spent hours on, on the phone with people, which is why we call him MVP. But but taking advantage of that thing, right? I, I'm a real true believer that there's no, there there is there is so much more trust built by somebody else telling you what they think of this service provider, this turnkey rental property company, this one thing that may or may not be good for you than the person selling it to you, that that is what we try to create. We try to surround people with other people so that, sure, if you're here for the free value, you're here to make friends, awesome. If you're in some kind of like decision-making cycle, we think the most valuable thing is to just to reach out to other people that are like you, that have done this thing and can give you their unadulterated opinion that's not going to like be of economic gain to them on whether this works for you, whether it doesn't, how you would do it if, if you were in this case. So I love that, man. I love that you went there. It's the it's the value of the community. That's It's the people that are here that show up every week that really makes this thing great. Yeah, absolutely. And your guests, your guests are terrific. 
Thanks, man. Thanks. Hey, you included, my friend. All right. So patron Santorios of the community, Michael Santorios, says, what was the reason Bill decided to sell his condo and do the 1031 to Jacksonville? Uh, <laughs> the primary reason I want to sell my condo is because I got into a thing called an HOA, an HOA that was $500 per month. Imagine how much equity that's eaten into. That was the impetus for selling the damn condo. I got to tell you, that thing I, I just pisses me off every time I think about it. And it, it was not an easy condo to sell, by the way, because of that HOA. But hey, now JWB has menu houses without an <laughs> HOA. So there's, yeah. a, it's, I mean, some of them do in the neighborhoods, maybe what, what is that, 100 bucks a year or something like that. But yeah. They're not, they're not managed by the Chads and Karens of the world and <laughs> pretty easy stuff. So it's, fu was, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because we talk about that all the time. They're not all HOAs are created equally, right? Like there is the, there's the HOA that is optimized for people that are owner occupants, right? And they're going to want to put a pool in or pool, you know, put different like quality of life things. And then there's HOAs that are generally controlled by people that are investors, and those that are run and controlled by folks that are investors will only invest in things that have been shown to increase the rent to price ratio, increase occupancy, increase the metrics that drive better ROI for communities. So yeah, JWB has a, you know, they call them widgets, right? They bring them off the assembly line, they sell them to you and they're actually homes. Some are in HOAs, some aren't, but the ones that JWB offers that are in HOAs, they generally have a majority stake of control in the HOA because of the other investors or run the, you know, like have a, a seat on the HOA themselves and have the data flywheel to inform any decisions that are happening on, hey, this sounds like a great decision, but it doesn't actually drive higher ROI, while this decision over here does drive higher ROI. Higher ROI. So again, another reason to have an expert on board. We've got a caller from France, anonymous attendee, you may have heard of him, Bill, asking, at the current interest rate situation, when will it make sense to 1031 an existing rental property from another Florida city, not Jack's, over into JWB rental property? Thanks. There's about 150 k in equity with mortgage interest at 4%. What do you think about that, Bill? I'd say get, get into the, go ahead and go for it, pull the trigger, um, pull the asset class. Don't worry about the interest rates so much. The, that can usually be taken care of when when the trajectory goes down, you can refinance. Now, initially, you may not be able to, you might be locked in to or, or penalized if you do it, but for four years, you'd be locked in to your current interest rate. Now, I'm at, in, I had to do the same thing, basically, and I'm at 6.9% on one property. And the other JWB property was like 4% or something like that. I don't know how they worked it out. I got a good buy down because of the JWB incentives. But mm -hmm. yeah, I would say not, don't worry about that too, too much. Because again, you're dealing with an asset class below median value on a national average. And it gets close to that 1% rule. If you're not familiar with the 1% rule, which which is almost fiction <laughs> these days, that's whereby you buy a property for $300,000. Well, if you can make a monthly rent of three thousand dollars for it, which is very improbable, then you're you're doing well. So you get a with JWB properties, you get about as close to that one percent rule as possible, even with the trajectory of the of the interest rates. Yeah, and I don't know who asked this question because they asked it anonymously, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll give you my take. And but what I'm going to tell you is, I think this is another one that we're going to roll into next Thursday show because I want Greg to answer this question. I think if he was here, he would he would say that that's, that is there's a couple of things to look at, right? Like A, it's how is that property performing for you? Is the team that's managing that property providing you a great experience? Are you self-managing it? Right. Like is this thing, is this thing no fun for you? Right. Like if if the one that you currently own is not a lot of fun for you then it's a different equation on whether you're going to like move it to another place, right? Because taking that, selling it, coming here to JWB is going to be a super passive experience. It's going to be professionally managed. So there's some benefit there outside of the economics. If it's purely economics, I think he's going to tell you to run the numbers, right? Like the, how much, like, what are your goals? Are you trying to get growth, right? If you were to take out 150K in equity and you have credit to get leverage, you could probably buy 
to JWB properties and be set up in this like long-term growth plan, probably not, you know, it, it won't be a lot of cash flow today, but you're setting yourself up to really nice cash flow in the future by doubling the amount of properties that you have and getting to that point of increasing your cash flow and continuing that going on. And then the last thing is is what Bill said, right? Like you can opt in right now, get in at 7%. Somewhere in the next three to five years, rents, interest rates are going to go down. You can refinance at that point. And now you've you've made the move. You bought it at a lower price than it's ever going to be because homes will continue to go up in the next five years and things of that sort, right? So those are all those are all the type of like scenarios that I think you need to run through. Again, that's exactly what a call at chatwithjwb.com is like. You would just set up and they would talk you through each of those, run the numbers for you, show it to you. So that's a really good scenario. That being said, next Thursday, I'm asking Greg that we're going to answer that. And if you let us know who you are, we'll email it to you as well. So good answer though, Bill, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you chiming in on that one. What else we got here? We got Margaret Smith also asking, what is the interest rate for investment properties right now? Margaret, I'm not the expert on that right now. <laughs> I think it's somewhere in the sevens, right? Like uh, I would assume. So that stuff is changing all the time, but I think it's, I would assume it's somewhere in the sevens. That stuff changes often. JWB has like a preferred lender network where they get updates from them on on a weekly basis. So they'll give you the the most up-to-date number. Bill, I have, you're, a, you're out there doing deals, man. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, no, you're right. I think you nailed it. Yeah. And again, with the incentives, it was kind of interesting that the JWB uh, resource that I had to refinance the two deals got me in, like I said, 6.9%. Again, this is just a few months ago and another one at 4%, a little over four. I don't know what magic they did to do that, but yeah, it's you still get yeah. some deals out there. Ton, tons of different, I think Dean said it, lots of different ways to skin the cat, right? Like that you yeah, can, you can put more money down and, and have a lower rate or, or have more equity or, or whatever you're going to do, increase cash flow. Bill, what are you, when I visited you to your beautiful home out there in the mountains, you told me a kind of interesting story of how you acquired that thing, man. You want to, you want to talk to us how, how you pounce on that opportunity? Oh yeah. You know, again, it was through the education of uh, fortune builders. We learned how to start tracking properties. Mostly uh, I'm in acquisitions. My wife is the renovator. So I get a property, she renovates it. Great, great team. But so we were accustomed to looking at properties coming in on our feed all the time. And we kind of had our eye out on, on some mountain properties. It's a little bit tougher to do if you have a job like my wife Marie does down in Denver you know, you don't want to be driving down a mountain road in the snow, certainly not daily in the winter, but we, uh, by gosh, we kept looking and we found, and I'll, I'll type it in here in case you're bored, but we found this one pop up. I'm, pi I'm typing in the address right now, 183 South County Highway 67, mm -hmm. Colorado. You can pull that up on Zillow. That's what we found. And those are the pictures. The pictures are still up there. I checked it this morning of what we found. We thought, oh my gosh, you know, this thing is like $425,000 in the year 2016, I think it was. And we thought, oh, we got to attack, attack this. And the couple, it was a gay couple, a very nice couple of guys. They did a beautiful job of the decoration of this place, but they had eight chickens and uh, a couple goldfish. And as part of our education on how to negotiate, we said, hey, we will buy your property at asking price and we'll take over the chickens. We'll take care of them because you don't have to move. You don't have to move with your chickens or sell them or whatever. And you won't have to move your goldfish, which would be a huge pain in the butt. And uh, don't want you flushing them down the toilet. We'll, we'll keep them. And we'll also take care of any junk you have. Any stuff in the garage you don't want to deal with, we'll take over that. So we gave them kind of a good incentive and verbal pitch and and we got it by gosh and then covid came and i don't know how it was the rest of the country but here in denver prices skyrocketed in real estate i don't know how that happened but we all know it did and the the value of this property soared like most everything else in colorado but yeah. back to the access we our, our road i mean pablo's been up here it's nothing to get down the hill it's a beautiful drive every single day it's paved they, they, the county shovels it. It's never been a problem. So we got really lucky. I love it, man. I, you know what I love about that story and your business and what you're doing now and your investments with JWB is that the one of the big things that's opened up my eyes being part of this community 
is just the power of real estate. It is so applicable to so many things that value your life if you get educated in all the different things that happen from it, right? Like me, me just sitting in the seat, hearing stories like yours and the rest of the community has really opened up my eyes to this idea. Like if you understand the asset class and you understand the mechanics around it and how the ecosystem works, there is just, it just, makes you so much more valuable to yourself and to everybody around you. Like I've had friends needing to do things with real estate. I'm like, oh, you know, you could do this. And I forget that it's not common knowledge, you know, like your, your ability to just like pitch the homeowner on, come on, man, give me a good deal. Cause I'm gonna take care of your pet. That doesn't, that doesn't occur. That doesn't occur to many people, but it definitely occurs to those of us in this community that are investing in themselves or learning about the different levers of real estate. It occurs to fortune builder students all these different kinds of things are so valuable, man. Are you, what is your, are you still kind of like learning about real estate? What are, what are kind of like your go-to sources? Have you read any good books lately? Anything like that? Oh yeah. Thank you. It's just been diving in into it. And you know, as much as we love the fortune builders curriculum, cause it's all there. It's just going on to YouTube and sniffing around and, and going to the archives of JWB on YouTube is a huge thing. I did that the other day, saw Aaron's hey. show. And oh, and then the other podcast I missed, by the way, a couple of weeks ago on the turmoil in the market mm. about halfway through that. So yeah, man, just, you know, and in fact, if you get off the get off playing the radio while you're working, if you, you're lucky like I am to work at home, you know, or, or uh, quit messing around with video games or all that crap, keep playing in the background, play some YouTube educational series. And uh, even if though you can't pay attention to it the whole time, you know, you'll get enough of it during the day that you pick up some really cool stuff. That's how I learned how to do seller finance deals. Just yeah. heard a show in the background kind of seeped into my subconscious. It's cool, man. Between YouTube, I'm a, I'm an audio guy, right? So I do I do what you're saying. I'm I'm listening to like audio stuff in the background, and I'll tune in sometimes, and I'll tune out other times. But I feel like it's it's so different than it was 20 years ago because thanks to podcasts and audiobooks and YouTube, like mentorship is at scale, right? Like there is you can you can find anybody to be your mentor these days without actually having to know them because there are so many smart people are putting content out on the internet. So I love that. I love that you do that, man. Thanks for the shout out on the on the YouTube video. Well, thank you. Yeah. And speaking of smart people on the internet, that's you, Pablo. In fact, I'd encourage all you guys to go to Pablo. Correct me if you if you can, but it's conversationswithpablo.com. Oh, connectwithpablo.com? Yeah, connectwithpablo.com. <laughs> thank you. Go to that. And there's a cool little video there. Check it out. See what he's doing. That's I right. It's, a, it's that five minute video on how to, how to walk into a room full of people you don't know. Right. I forgot about yeah. that. Oh, it's brilliant. It's genius. Yeah. Talk about fortune builders going to ignite every year. This yeah. is this is great, but you get to know more about Pablo and what he does and his side businesses, his main business is really cool. This isn't the only show he does. <laughs> I appreciate that, Bill. Thank you, man. Thanks for the shout out. And yeah, you're right. I'm on a, I'm on a bunch of different podcasts and stuff like that. I, the community wants, and I'm getting a lot of questions. How the chickens doing? You still got the chickens? <laughs> oh man, we lost a couple chickens to a bobcat. We lost one chicken to a coyote, and we've got an electrical fence out here. This is where the this is the coop, by the way. I'm waiting for Laura. We're down to one chicken named Laura, and she. I was waiting for her to come out here, but can't see. It's kind of overblown the sunlight, but yeah, uh, yeah. And we only we're down to one goldfish too, by the way. So I don't know. Oh. Oh, geez, man. All right. Well, hope it's a, hope it's a mild winter for them all. Right. And they, they do okay. <laughs> anything else, Bill? Is there anything that I'm not asking you or something that you want to share about or anything like that? Oh gosh. No, just no Bob Pablo's birthday is coming up November 2nd. Uh, how do you know that? By the way, you mentioned that on the pre-call. Yeah. Yeah. T well, it, my birthday is on 1031. That's the magic uh, number of the show. 1031. <laughs> <laughs> so my birthday was coming up. I just happened to see his was too, because we're connected on Facebook. Good call. Uh, but uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a happy Halloween, but I guess you'll have a Halloween show next Tuesday. You know, man, I can't believe I missed the opportunity that Halloween falls on a Tuesday and it's 1031. We should totally do a 1031 show on Halloween, but we just did a 1031 show. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see what we got coming up there. <laughs> Good call. Good call, Bill. Always adding value, man. And listen, I want to say, I just really appreciate you being part of this community, man. Like I, like, like you, you showed up and from the beginning, you've just been very generous and very active and ask great questions. I, I, I really value your insight as a 
former me- legacy media guy of what you think of the show, what we're doing, right? That was the the conversation we yeah. had out in the porch with you and me and the hummingbird um, was, uh, was me <laughs> picking your brain on that stuff, man. It's just really, really valuable. And I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'm just pumped that we got to do this, that everybody got to see your face. We didn't do an investor profile because you've only been investing with JWB since the beginning of this year, but we'll have you back once some of that stuff matures and give you an an insight into the community. Denny Davis, yes, on my other podcasts, I do rap, just FYI. So if you haven't, if you haven't listened to the Natural Average Invest Show podcast, the intro is a rap song by me. And that being said, really want to thank the community that was here. 50 plus folks just out here providing great, great, great context that we could, that we get to answer. When you're here and you ask these great questions, Teresa, Margaret, and, you know, those of you that are that are coming to us when you're making like a Pamela and Dean and everybody, right? Like when you're making buying decisions or you're here to give advice to folks, your questions really help steer a way to add value. Because if you have the question, everybody else, you know, 100 people have the question. So whether you send us topics or you come here and you ask great stuff, really, really appreciate it. And Bill, thanks for doing it, man. You want to, you want to, you want to, how do people reach you, man? If people want to do business, if somebody knows of a, of a family who's got to put their, put mom in a, put mom into some assisted living and they could really help use help liquidating the property. Where do they go? How do they get in contact with you? The uh, best way I just typed it in is proportunity at gmail.com. Great. Proportunity, P-R-P-O-R-T-U-N-I-T-Y at gmail.com. For anybody that is listening on the podcast or YouTube, you can rewind that a couple of times because I know I speak fast. Appreciate you being here, buddy. We'll be in contact. Thank you, community. Hope to see you on Tuesday with GC when he gets back here. And until then, what do we tell him, Bill? Don't be average. Listen to Bill, everybody. Mountain man.